Tejas fighter jet crashed in front of thousands of stunned spectators during a high-risk aerial stunt. How did India's indigenous fighter fail at the display? Is it about deeper issues? Even after the crash, will we be going for fully indigenous fighter fleet for India? And how all of this has brought Indian indigenous defence manufacturing at crossroads? After decades of hard work, India was finally able to build its own fighter jet, the Tejas. But after the Dubai air show crash, critics are calling it unsafe and they are also questioning the Hindustan Aeronautics Limited's worthiness and readiness. But was this a systematic flaw or it was a tragic yet isolated incident? Hello everyone, welcome to Vajram and Ravi's Flash News. My name is Shubhangi Singh. And today we are going to understand that what goes behind this whole scenario. Is this a systematic flaw or it was just an isolated incident? What are the reasons behind it? What are the government orders and what are we looking at in terms of indigenization when we talk about defense and defense related products? So let us start with understanding what happened in yesterday's incident. So basically an air show is going on in Dubai at the Al Maktoum International Airport and our fighter jet Tejas MK1A was performing and in this flying display the crash happened. After this crash there was immediate fire which was controlled by the teams and unfortunately we lost the pilot which was later confirmed by the Indian Air Force as well as Ministry of Defense and now the matter has gone to the court of inquiry. Now when we talk about this particular crash, this automatically in your minds and in the minds of critic raises the questions about the credibility of the fighter jet that has been built in our country. But then there are deeper questions. If there are problems, what are they? If there are no problems, then why this has happened? So let us try to understand that what could have been the possible reasons that how it could have happened. There are multiple factors which could have led to this tragic incident that has happened. For example, there could have been technical factors, be it the engine power loss that could have happened suddenly or a transient failure. Other than that, oil pump or lubrication anomalies which has been previously seen in crash investigation that usually this is the reason when crash of such fighter jets happen. Other than that, flight control computer response anomalies occur and there is also the possibility of system overheating which could have occurred in the Middle East particular temperature and the climate that is seen. Other than the technical factors, we also have in front of us human or pilot related factors. For example, low altitude leaves a very low margin. So in the air show, there was display of aerobatics and it was happening at a very low altitude where was a negative maneuver was going on. And high G maneuver miscalculation might have happened. There could have been some spatial disorientation because it was a tight display profile. And there are then there are environmental factors as well, where a bird strike could have taken place at the low altitude or it could be heat, humidity, crosswind. So there are multiple factors apart from just the fact that Tejas was wrong or something was wrong in Tejas. So that should be left not for speculation, for the court of inquiry to answer, understand and bring it to the public. But before that also, let us look into the dimension which will give us more clarity that what has been going on in terms of indigenization, where does our Tejas fleet go up to, what are the reasons behind it and everything around it. So let us begin with understanding that is this the first incident, an isolated one? So unfortunately, it's not. Last year only, we saw another accident of Tejas in which single engine failure had occurred in the training post exercise. Fortunately, the pilot was ejected and it suggested, the inquiry suggested that the oil pump and engine seizure was the main problem here. And the second incident has happened now. So again, as I pointed out, that directory raises question. 
but if we look at the data given that program has begun almost 25 years back the track record of only two accident in 20 plus year program is a very low accident rate if you look at the accident rates of fighter jets such as mig 21 this rate was way higher and both of these crashes have occurred after high stress maneuvering phases which is actually a high risk zone itself so here we get to understand that comparable single engine fighters globally have similar early life accident patterns and this is not something that is unusual that has happened with the Tejas fighter jet MK1A. Now when we have understood the frequency of accidents that has occurred, now let us move to understand better about this particular fighter jet Tejas. So when we talk about Tejas, we get to see that this is a light combat aircraft and this whole concept has originated back in 1984. Can you tell me in the comment section that which prime minister was responsible for the conception of this whole idea and later the flight, the first flight of this LCA took place in 2001. When we talk about this fighter jet, we have to understand that this is a single engine but 4.5 generation and multi-role light fighter jet and the idea was to replace MiG-21 for which we were dependent on Russia and so that we have a proper indigenous backbone present from our country so that we have proper backing and proper dependence and self-reliance in terms of defense as well. Now when we are talking about this particular fighter jet, it has more variants as well. When we talk about this fighter jet, we have to understand that it is loaded with key features such as AESA radar, then we have advanced EWN countermeasures which are involved, then there is fly-by-wire quadruplex system, there is extensive composite airframe, air-to-air -air refueling and precision strike capability and there are variants to it. So if we talk about the variant which suffered in the crash that was MK1A which is the current one in the fleet as well and the next major order from the government is for this very variant but the first one was MK1 and the next upcoming is MK2 which is a twin engine power and a bigger airframe which is as of now under development. Now when we are talking about these variants, we get to see that MK1A is of the present highlight because 83 jets are on order and this order is expected to be fulfilled by 2029 to 2030 in that particular financial year and this is where the question and the question against the whole indigenous fleet is coming because this one crash has raised question on this whole order itself. So let us understand more about this. So let us try to understand if there are actually certain issues with the manufacturing or if there are any structural bottlenecks. So when we are talking about Tejas itself, yes, there are certain bottlenecks, but they are program based bottlenecks. They are not design based flaws. So program bottlenecks such that we are dependent on America's General Electric, this is the name of the company, which gives us F404, F414 engines. So there has been delay in the deliveries of these engines. No indigenous engines are available if these deliveries do not take place or they are delayed. There is supply chain issue, there is a huge immaturity and delayed issue in supply chain. How is that? Because if you look at the number of MSMEs involved, it is more than 250. When such huge number of MSMEs involved, any problem in one point of supply chain will lead to delays. Furthermore, the avionics as well as LRUs, they, their ramping is very slow as of now. Furthermore, issues are also on the end of when we are talking about indigenization as well as transitioning when we are talking about radars. Be it AESA or EW, they have been inducted in the later lots of these fighter jets and as of now, many of the EW suits are still being imported. 
Furthermore, the production rate is very slow as compared to the order rate. Despite the scaling to 24 craft plus year order, there is a huge backlog and any issue in between will have cascading delays which will reflect badly on the indigenization process that we are talking about. And most importantly, when we are talking about air show and the crash where it has happened, there is always a demonstration risk which is associated with it, especially in terms of single engine aircrafts because they are vulnerable, especially during aerobatics because of the pressure that is on just one engine. Now the bottlenecks are in front of you and it makes you understand that yes, there are certain issues that need to be addressed, but that they are not present at the level of the design. And if it was at the level of design, a lot was at stake given the amount of government orders that have already been placed. A major order of 2021 that I was talking about, 83 MK1A stages, that order has been placed, not fulfilled yet. 2025, 97 additional MK1A where the government is investing more than 60,000 crores and this is India's biggest ever domestic fighter order that we have seen. So a lot of questions are directly being raised on this if this is the right place to go put government's money because of the crash that has just happened and this crash does not only raise a question on this it puts immense pressure on the delivery targets, on the timely delivery, the fleet safety measures, export reputation, as well as the squadron readiness, which is very much necessary for a defense scenario. Now that we are in the situation where we have the facts in our hand, now let us move and understand that what are the direct implications of the crash that has happened. The first and most important impl implication, here are two. First are the perception risk. That is in terms of there will be a negative international attention and this will directly lead to effect on the export bids which are coming on the indigenously defense manufactured goods from Malaysia, Argentina, Egypt, Philippines, etc. Second most important here is the safety revaluation. Now when we are talking about the aerobatics protocol, this directly highlights that we need better revision of that because if we know that single engine aircrafts and fighter jets are vulnerable to it, then this caution must be placed for single engine fighters, especially for displays. Other than that, we will also get to see political and strategic pressure. As I said, the government has committed a lot of money here and the, any sort of program delay will already impact the national defense plans and there will be a direct pressure on operational continuity as well because that this will lead to an additional strength of the presence squadron be it Su-30 MKI or the Rafale fleets which are to be present until and unless Tejas comes to the rise. And on this note, I would like to highlight and conclude on the fact that why this one crash, which is tragic, which is saddening, but it will not derail the program because this is the only second crash that we are getting to see and it is not indicative of any design flaw. This is something which is comparable to that has been seen in early career accidents, be it of Gripen F-16 and also JAS-39. And it is important that we focus not just on headlines or what random critiques are saying, but on the final judgment that comes out of the inquiry. Now, on this note, I'll be leaving you with a practice question here. You can put down the answers in the comment section. Now, revealing the answer of yesterday's question that was asked, the correct answer here is C. That was all for today. Thank you so much. <laughs>